You're probably thinking, can you leave me alone until the end of the year? I'll work on myself when the new year rolls around. If you are writing off the rest of this year, saying that I'll try again fresh next year, you are wasting an opportunity. During my winter arc, or my summer arc, since I'm in Australia, of last year, this is what I achieved. I started YouTube, I went to Japan, and I learned Japanese in two months, which was a 10-year dream that I made come true. I stopped waking up at 8 55 a.m. you know five minutes early for work and I started waking up at 7 30 to meditate and last but not least I quit nicotine on the 11th of December literally 20 days before the end of the year just because I didn't complete any of these intentions in January it didn't mean that I needed to fail with abandon throughout the rest of the year I'm sure you're thinking, well, that's great for you, Miss Productivity Queen, but surely the rest of the year you probably achieved all this other shit. And let me tell you, I achieved nothing before October 2023. Like, I partied and I got tattoos and I went to conventions and none of these things were new or fun and exciting or goals that I had set out to achieve. I achieved nothing before October, but with 2024 looming around the corner, I knew that I had one last chance to make some meaningful change in my life. Completing things that were impossible to me before the new year had even started it gave me this momentum to keep going when the new year rolled around and I could use that collective new year's energy to propel me even further. But honestly, the when doesn't matter. It's not too late. Just because you didn't do it to the timeline that you wanted doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it at all. So firstly, we're gonna do my favorite thing, which is planning. You cannot be a new person if you can't even envision who she is. We're going to create the dream girl manifesto so we can see clearly exactly who we wanna become. I made up some journal prompts for you. What traits do you want to have? Do you wanna be cute? Do you wanna be smart? Do you wanna be funny? <laughs> the personality traits that you want. Maybe she's hardworking, focused, motivated. What traits do you already have that you don't want to lose? This is about seeing the good in yourself, acknowledging that it's there and making an intention to hold onto it. If you really love to support small brands and then you become an influencer and then you just accept any kind of PR from any kind of fast fashion, we go along the path that we want. We can lose sight of the things that got us there. <laughs> For me, I am a beginner at YouTube, so I have a beginner's mindset. I know that I don't know everything. All information that I hear is new and awesome and amazing. If I become a seasoned YouTuber, then I start to feel like I know better because I have more experience. If the algorithm changes and I won't be as receptive to new information because I won't have that beginner's mindset anymore. What kind of content are they consuming? Slash what is their media diet? Maybe you love junk food content and maybe the ideal version of you consumes content that helps them grow and educates them or inspires them or uplifts them. What do they believe to be true about themselves? and about their reality. So in my reality, anything that I am anxious about and anything that I'm scared of, these things don't actually come true. If I ruminate and ruminate on something and if I'm scared that something will happen, these things don't actually come true for me. I know it's typical manifestation advice. If you focus on a thought or on a fear, then eventually you'll manifest it. But that's Kind of the same as telling someone with anxiety just to not think about it. So I decided in my reality that the things that I'm anxious about and things that I'm scared of, they don't actually come true. That is what I've decided and that's what I choose to believe. And let me tell you, it's working out pretty good so far. What actions do they take consistently? What are their habits, routines, and rituals? We're going to identify what will happen if you don't take action. Creating an anti-vision is not a pessimistic practice. It's to identify two possible realities for you so that you can navigate in between them. We have created point A by deciding who we want to be and who we want to become. Now we have to create point B to identify what happens if we don't take action and see what we don't want to be. Nature tends towards entropy, so your inaction doesn't just keep you stagnant, it makes you worse. 
you have the same shitty diet, if you never move your body, then eventually by not changing, you are doing nothing. And by doing nothing, your situation gets worse. It doesn't stay the same. It doesn't stay stagnant. Nothing happens when nothing happens, but also when nothing happens, shit happens. What chaos do you not want your life to fall into? You need to spell out for yourself that things don't change if they don't change. Your life will stay the same. Your problems continue being the same problems. You'll keep dating the same guy, but with a different face. Your left shoulder will always always bother you. You will always rely on your parents for money. You will always have that boss that low-key abuses you. Your friend will always ditch you for the guy that she's seeing. She will run back to you once another cycle of hers completes and she needs you for support and comfort. So identify the looping cycles in your reality that you want to break. And I know this got pretty heavy but you also need to know that your life staying as it is right now can also count as the anti-vision. <laughs> If this is a place that you never want to be again, this is point B. I like to create a vision board. Yes, I know I made one not that long ago. And you can refer to that video if you want to check out my process. The hair intention came true. So I felt like I had to update the entire board. This is my favorite way to inject some fun and positivity and some lightheartedness to reduce some of the kind of heavier topics of the whole recreation process. It's like when you're playing around in character creation mode before playing the actual game. Now that we have the identity mapped out, we're going to distill it down into a phrase that you can easily access every day. Kind of like a mission statement, but it's like your mission identity statement. We're just giving like a title to the ideal version of yourself. My one is I'm the Pink Pilates princess, YouTube star, six figure creative entrepreneur, version of Tracy. That is the version of myself that I want to access. And the way that we can access this is by every day asking ourselves, what can I do today to embody this XYZ version of myself? And whenever you come across situations like maybe you have to handle a conflict between you and another person, maybe you are fighting yourself to get up at the ass crack of dawn, even though you really don't want to, in those situations where you're deciding to do or to not do, ask yourself, what would my ideal self do in this situation? If she was here, would she get herself up out of bed? What would she do if she was experiencing the situation that you were currently experiencing? That is how you step into her shoes. That is how you embody her energy. We've identified point A and point B, the vision and the anti-vision. We're going to identify the gaps that are in between. And we're going to bridge them. What is she doing that you are not doing? What are the gaps between you now and future you? Say that you wake up at 10 a.m. and future you wakes up at 6 a.m. There's a four hour difference, which might be a little bit hard <laughs> to change your sleeping schedule by four hours. So what are the steps that you can realistically achieve to get to that ideal behavior. Maybe you wake up at 9.30, then 9 a.m., then 8.30, then 8 a.m. and just tackle it in little bite-sized chunks. Maybe you're addicted to social media, but going cold turkey makes you want to give up before you even start. But you can set app limits on your phone. Maybe it's one hour a day. You know, that's better than the two hours that you were spending every day. Eventually you get it down to 45 minutes a day to 30 minutes a day. Maybe you are addicted to external validation and you need constant reassurance from your friends, your family members, your partners. Therapy isn't enough. You need them to write a contract that says, no, I'm not secretly mad at you to get to your higher self, which is unbothered, doesn't care what anyone else thinks, can validate herself, is focused on herself and is securely attached in all, all her relationships. Maybe the first step is just learning about detachment or learning about attachment styles. Then maybe the second step is learning how to validate yourself. All these little practices that you're learning, the next step could be to incorporate all of these into your morning routine so that you're continuously practicing whatever you need to practice. Next, you need to create a list of topics that you need to research 
in order to become your ideal version of yourself. So what are the things that you don't know that she knows? Make a list of these things so that you can fill the knowledge gap between you and her. For me, I'm learning about detachment, focus. I'm learning about this villain era thing. The last thing that you need to do to become her is to declutter the things that they would not keep in their house. The things that are not aligned with the new version of you cannot stay in the same environment as you. They say that your environment is a reflection of your mind, therefore a tidy environment is a tidy mind, right? Would she keep this in her environment? Is this thing a reflection of her? You can bring back the question that we learned in the first point of would the ideal version of myself keep this object? Would she wear this outfit? Would she keep the expired mascara around? <laughs> If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then you can access the fun spring cleaning energy to do this. To become that girl, you have to become her. It's a mind fuck how simple this sounds, but that is the concept of embodiment. Mentally and delusionally, you have to already be there. You have to already be her. Even if you are still waiting for reality to catch up with you. You can't wait for reality to change and then you can be who you want to be and then you'll be happy because your reality only changes when you change. Your reality in this moment is your decisions that you have made up until now. So if you want to make a new life for yourself, if you want to live in a new reality, if you want to be a new person, you have to make new decisions. The decisions that you make are the ones that your future self would make if she she was in this position to get herself from here to her. Your reality is created from your beliefs and your beliefs are strengthened by the evidence that you create in your reality. Maybe you don't have a lot of evidence to your new beliefs. You need to create your own evidence. The way you create evidence is by making new decisions. The new decisions lead to new evidence and the new evidence reinforces the identity that you're becoming and once that identity is reinforced you can make more decisions that reinforce your identity further. It's an upward spiral. If we want to do an appearance-based example you are not looking to become hot. You are not trying to be hot. You are already hot. Now you do what a hot person does and you take care of your body. Body. Don't be like, I'm already hot so I can eat like shit and do fuck all every day and use your time that you could be at the gym making yourself even hotter to scroll TikTok. Like what? No, no, not like that. That's not what hot girls do. Okay, how do I maintain and get better? You are perfect just the way you are is a lie that we tell ourselves as an excuse to not self-develop, to stay within our comfort zones where it's comfortable and falling into a false sense of security that stagnation is stability. Being perfect the way you are is not an excuse to do nothing. If you have a forward motion mindset, if you have motivation and drive to be better, then yes, that is perfect. Focus on yourself and who you are becoming. Not on what your friends are doing, not on what your parents want for you, not on what society says you should be doing, and definitely not on your current reality. You focus more on your current reality, guess what you manifest? More of what you're focusing on, which is your current reality, which is the thing you're trying to change. Stepping into your power isn't all sunshine and rainbows and manifestation and delulu. Discipline is what you need to access when that shiny new object motivation runs dry. But the societal programming that we have with the word discipline creates a lack mentality because we often think that we don't have enough of it. Therefore, disempowering us with this lack mindset, making us feel like discipline is out of reach to us. So try this one mindset shift to reframe discipline as devotion. This is a concept that I learned from a YouTube creator called Jills. Reframing it as devotion invites a softer mindset in which we show up for our future selves to give to her rather than taking from our present moment. We all want a man to give us princess treatment, but you have to give yourself princess treatment. You have this beautiful, gorgeous, 
healthy vessel. So let's show up in devotion to serving it. This temple needs offerings. What nourishing foods does this body want to eat? What fun movement can we do for ourselves today that serves our ideal self? Sometimes these acts of service towards the person that we want to become aren't going to be so cute and fun. Like for me, I broke my body a little bit and the journey to fix it is kind of low-key boring. (laughs) I continue to show up on the days that I said I would show up in devotion to becoming a future version of myself who doesn't have my problems anymore because she showed up and worked on herself. If you are like, what is the point of trying anything new if I'm just going to fail? Let me ask you, are you winning right now? Are you succeeding right now? You think you're avoiding failure by not trying? Wrong. You are failing every 15 seconds that you use your thumb to scroll up and see another short form content. You are speed running your own self-sabotage. Instead of failing down your self-sabotage spiral, why don't you fail up at something meaningful? If there are things that you want to achieve, you have to fail your way up until you don't fail anymore. Like I understand like the mind fuck with that is how many times do I have to fail? When do the failures end? And unfortunately no one can give you that answer and I know it's super discouraging to see people get that overnight success in their journey but you don't know what failures they're not posting on the internet. If you find it difficult to create meaningful change in your life despite watching every Exit your lazy girl era video that the YouTube algorithm forces down your throat. See my how to achieve your goals video for some practical and actionable tips to actually do the damn things that you said you were going to do. 